Now that we've got Rolle's theorem, we can turn to the big theorem of this section, which is the mean value theorem. The mean val just like with Rolle's theorem, the mean value theorem assumes that you've got a function that's continuous on a closed interval, and it's differentiable on the open interval. Okay. But it doesn't require that the function starts at 0 and ends at 0. It just says any old function that starts somewhere and ends somewhere else. Okay. We don't know what the shape of the function is. But we can figure out the average rate of change between the starting point and the end point. See, the end point is at b, f of b, and the starting point is a, f of a. The function might do something funny in the middle. Okay. Now, the amount that the function has increased is f of b minus f of a. The distance here is b minus a. So this ratio that comes in the uh, mean value theorem is the slope of the secant line between this point and this point. So it gives you the average rate of change between a and b. So the theorem says that if you've got a function that starts here and ends here, then somewhere in the middle, there's a point where the derivative is exactly equal to the average rate of change. Now, in this case, there's actually three such functions, three such points. The theorem says there's guaranteed to be at least one. There can be more, but there's at least one. So the way that we prove this theorem is that we define a new function. A new function is the equation of this line here. So let's let g of x be f of a plus this funny slope times x minus a. So that's the equation of this line. And f of x is just our original function. And we'll define h of x to be f of x minus g of x. So at this point, f of x and g of x are the same thing. So we have that h of a is 0. And at this point, f of x, which is the point on the curve, and h of, h, which is h of x, which is the point on the straight line, those also the same thing. So now we can bring in our old friend Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem says there is a c with h prime of c equals 0. So that means that f prime of c minus g prime of c has got to be 0, which means that f prime of c is g prime of c. And g prime, you can see, g is just a constant plus another constant times x minus a. The derivative of g is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So that's the proof of the mean value theorem. Now, once we've got this theorem, what good is it? Well, let's suppose that you take a long car trip. At noon, you get on a high-speed toll road at mile 30. At 2 p.m., you get off at mile 210. What can you say about your speed along the way? So we say f of t is the position at time t. And here a is 0 o'clock p.m., 12 o'clock, and b is 2 o'clock. And we say the distance you traveled is 180 miles. Your average speed is 90, uh, is, uh, 90 miles an hour. And that's higher than the speed limit. Now, do 
Do I know that you were going 90 at a particular time? Actually, I do. I don't know when you were doing 90. You might have been doing 100 for the first half of the race, uh, first half of the drive, and 80 for the second half. But I, but somewhere in the middle there, I know you were doing exactly 90 by the mean value theorem. So if when you get to the toll booth at the other end, they hand you a, a speeding ticket along with your receipt for for your toll, they've got you nailed. You were averaging 90 miles an hour. So at some point, you had to be doing exactly 90 miles an hour. Now, another application of the mean value theorem says the following. If f prime of x is 0 on an interval, then f of x is constant. How do we know that? Well, suppose it wasn't constant. Suppose you had a point here and a point here with different values. Well, then in between those two points, you would have a non-zero average rate of change. And the mean value theorem says that somewhere in between, you would have to have a non-zero derivative. That contradicts the fact that you have a zero derivative. So the only way that you can have a zero derivative is if your function is actually constant. What that also says is if you have two functions that have the same derivative, then the difference of those two functions is a constant because the derivative of f minus g is 0.